Hello, welcome to There Will Always Be Another Book. Uh, today I am talking about a book that I finished just last night, which sh showed up in one of my other videos, but Consider the Lobster by David Foster Wallace. Um, this is the first David Foster Wallace uh, collection that I've actually read, and it is a pretty easy four out of four stars for me. And if you are not aware of David Foster Wallace, he's uh, the writer of Infinite Jest and a bunch of other things. I, it's funny actually, this is the first uh, collection or works of Wallace that I've read in its entirety. I own both Infinite Jest and a supposedly fun thing I'll never do again, but uh, as a bit of a tangential story to this book, I was given as a gift, you know when you go to like bookstores and they have those blind dates with a book where they they wrap the book up they write maybe a brief synopsis or uh, or just like a tagline of the book and you're like oh that sounds interesting you're meant to do it sort of as a uh, you know not judging a book by its cover so my family did that for me where they bought me uh, a book a month and they wrote like a riddle on the book and I deciphered it and figured out that for December the book was Infinite Jest, which is awesome, and I'm so happy to own it, but unfortunately I can't read it until December. So uh, in the meantime, I purchased a supposedly fun thing I'll never do again, which I own and was very keen on reading, but I ran out of space when packing for my trip to Berlin, so I bought this while I was here, and this was such a good read. So maybe like a lot of people, I got interested in uh, Wallace through some of the YouTube videos, some of the great interviews that he did, like uh, on Charlie Rose, and also the um, the unedited interview with the German publishing company. I think it was in 2003 when the German translation of Infinite Jest uh, came out. And yeah, I was really excited. I knew that, uh, like, just based on the way he talks, I was like, man, this is a guy that's... Um, intellectually interested in and I want to follow and reading his reading his work has been just so uh, fulfilling even more so if you if you like uh, Wallace's kind of spoken elocution then you'll you'll very much like his uh, writing I think uh, Consider the Lobster is a collection of 10 uh, essays there are four long essays which I wrote down are uh, you know, kind of self-defined big big essays, I called them. Uh, big Red Sun, Authority and American Usage, Up Simba and Host. And there are six smaller essays. Uh, one of them has got a very long uh, Wallace-esque title. Uh, certainly the end of something or other, one would sort of have to think. And there's also some remarks on Kafka's funniness, from which probably not enough has been removed. Uh, the view from Mrs. Thompson's, How Tracy Austin Broke My Heart, Consider the Lobster, and Joseph Franks Dostoevsky. And while all of them are great, if I just give a, you know, a one, maybe even half sentence summary on, how do you do half a sentence? Anyway, uh, a short summary on each of them. Uh, Big Red Sun is about the Adult Video News Awards, which I think he describes it as like the Emmys, but for porn. Uh, certainly the end of something or other he is him just tearing John Updike a new one and I didn't like I'd heard of John Updike but I hadn't read any of his works um, and so it was just kind of funny to, to hear Wallace <laughs> go hard out uh, some remarks on Kafka's funniness that's a pretty self-explanatory title authority and American usage was so fascinating because it's he wrote it or well, he was commissioned to write a review for, let me get the exact name for it, um, Brian A. Garner's A Dictionary of Modern American Usage, where, and he, for those like me who are not aware, he introduces uh, us to the fact that there's this whole kind of schism in uh, lexicographers, lexiconographers, lexicographers, I can't, I don't remember the exact uh, word, uh, about people who have a prescriptive versus a descriptive approach to creating language, uh, or to uh, analyzing the English language, and really important distinctions, like how standard written English is 
just its own dialect. And uh, yeah, some really fascinating stuff. That was probably, that was maybe the highlight of this book for me, um, but I'll get to that. Um, the view from Mrs. Thompson's is pretty much um, just exactly where he was when 9-11 happened, which uh, is interesting to read. Um, uh, I'm not uh, American, so I maybe didn't, I uh, couldn't really relate or didn't have that similar cultural impact. Um, but yeah, still great, and that's a very short read. How Tracy Austin Broke My Heart was such an interesting um, uh, book because, or, or such an interesting essay because it's pretty much talking about the world champion tennis player Tracy Austin and how he's just kind of reading her autobiography memoir uh, pretty much broke the camel's back and uh, solidified for him that, uh, you know, th this genre of, of books is, is just terrible and is, <laughs> is not worth getting into um, because these people, are, even though they're absolute elites at the field, they're not, you know, perfect. They're not amazing writers and uh, eat. He also goes into ghost ghost writer stuff, but anyway, uh, Up Simba is uh, well. Up Simba and Host are the two kind of I think biggest essays of this. Um, Up Simba is him basically trailing along uh, John S. McCain uh, in two thousand when he's kind of running uh, against George Bush, which again not American and not that interested in American politics. So, um, uh, but it was just it was maybe. Maybe it was easier for me to disassociate because, um, you know, I don't have any particular strong political affiliation when it comes to American politics. So um, that was still uh, still su super interesting. And also the host of... Uh, oh, sorry, it's just called Host, not the host. Um, where David Foster Wallace is talking about a kind of conservative talk radio uh, host, John Ziegler. Ziegler? Um, and both of those are really fascinating, and I think they're great examples of... Uh, on the Charlie Rose interview, uh, he talked about how... He said that one of the kind of great things or great skills that Wallace has is, like, an attention for the spoken word, and that really comes through in Up Simba and Host. Uh, Consider the Lobster was... Weird, was weirdly enough, despite being the the titular essay, uh, it was kind of the least interesting um, essay uh, for this. I think it was, you know, compared to some other stuff, he really he goes through a bunch of um, like asking moral questions about the ethics of boiling lobsters alive. But really, a lot of the a lot of the essay, despite him spending a lot of time describing the um, Maine Lobster Festival, I think it's called. Uh, he really just sort of ends up at, you know, don't think about it too much. Like the ethical answer is, or maybe the eth it's not that the ethical answer is don't think about it too much, but that's just what we're all doing. And that's sort of the place that we're in, which is, is accurate, but it, it didn't really provide anything uh, new or substantive to the discussion, at least in my opinion. Um, so yeah, yeah, uh, that was just not not my favourite uh, of these essays. But uh, the last one is Joseph Frank Dostoevsky, the last one to mention, which was really interesting because it was a bit surreal uh, to actually read a particular footnote that appears on page 269, where um, uh, Wallace is talking about why... Dostoevsky, even being a heavily ideological writer, it it doesn't come across as uh, preachy, which um, was a bit surreal because uh, I even kind of talked about that in my Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man video, uh, and I used Dostoevsky as a specific reference. And I do want to read a part of Wallace's footnote here because it's just better than how I could describe it. So... Uh, Dot, 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 skipping a little bit of things for uh, to speed it up. But the thing about Dostoevsky's gift for character and for rendering the deep conf conflicts within, not just between, 
people is that it enables him to dramatize even extremely heavy, serious themes without ever being preachy or reductive, i.e. without ever blinking the difficulty of moral, spiritual conflicts or making goodness or redemption seem simpler than they are. And then he uh, gives an example like comparing Tolstoy's The Death of Ivan Ilyich uh, with um, Crime and Punishment. And, uh, you know, I know that's kind of kind of simple and obvious, but it was... It was just a bit funny to, you know, only a few days later, um, uh, kind of read through and uh, contextualize in words why it maybe fell a bit flat for me in the Portrait of the Artist uh, book, but not so much in Cameras of Brothers or Crime and Punishment. But yeah, there's not that much to else to talk about because... Um, I mean, their essays, it's not like I'm giving criticism on them or anything. Uh, if you have a particular fondness for Wallace's uh, footnote uh, footnote styles, then you'll be well, well rewarded in this. And at the risk of spoiling, I'll even show you that uh, the, the ultimate essay host is does not use footnotes. It uses... I can only think of these as sort of hyper footnotes um, like that. So uh, it's an extremely fun ride and uh, easier to track than you think. You know, if you have faith in yourself, you'll be able to come back. And uh, there are even some funny occasions. I mean, look at that. This, you know, that's that's the in-text writing. Um, of this page uh, and there are even some I spotted I think one or two funny occasions where footnotes lead back to themselves in a little bit of a loop uh, but yeah um, if you're a fan of uh, David Foster Wallace and you want an ins uh, a jump into his writings I well I can recommend this if you don't want to jump straight into Infinite Jest um, some of these are really awesome and especially the fact that uh, at least three of them uh, with Updike, um, Kafka, and uh, Dostoevsky are based around the literature. So, um, yeah, that's really all I wanted to say. I wanted to keep this short, but it's become a little bit uh, longer than I wanted to. Um, let me know in the comments, uh, other than the three that I've already mentioned, Infinite Jest, supposedly fun thing, Consider the Lobster. What are some other Wallace writings that you really recommend? I'd love to get into uh, reading some more of his stuff. I'm so, so keen to read Infinite Jest. Uh, again, I'm sort of preparing myself by reading uh, Gravity's Rainbow to see to see if I can prove my uh, big book chops. But yeah, I'm going to wrap it up there. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, remember to keep reading. There will always be another book. And I'll see you in the next video.